The first pinata I ever made was in fifth grade art class. We had to, to make pinatas as part of a project. And I had this gigantic balloon, this oblong balloon. And so I blew it up and I covered it and I decorated it like a football. But it wasn't pointed on the ends, it was round. And so it really looked like a big brown turd with a white scar on it. Um, and I never made another pinata after that. It was about 25 years later, I was cleaning my garage and I found this white shredded paper packing material. And I don't know why, but the first thing I thought was, this would make a good covering for a ghost pinata. So I made a ghost pinata for a Halloween party, a neighborhood Halloween party, and it looked really good and I really enjoyed it. And three years later, I made a pinata for one of my daughter's third birthdays. And it was a very simple heart-shaped pinata. But I've been doing it for about 10 years, and the pinatas have just gotten more and more elaborate. The very first pinatas I made, I think I suggested to my daughter, why don't I make a heart pinata for your birthday? And then after that, they started coming up with what they wanted for their birthday. And my daughter loved porcupine puffer fish, so she wanted a porcupine puffer fish pinata. And I'm thinking, how the heck do you make something like that? So it, they're always offering me new challenges. I want a dragon pinata. I want a rainbow zebra pinata. And I think they had kind of had a competition between them to see who could come up with the most difficult, elaborate pinata that would take daddy the longest to make so they could smash it in 15 minutes with their friends. These pinatas do take a lot of time. The rainbow zebra took about six weeks from beginning to end. It's very common for them to take two or three weeks. Um, they're all made using balloons and paper mache using flour and water. When my daughter said she wanted a porcupine puffer fish, I knew the body would be easy, just a balloon. The problem is I've got to have spikes sticking out on all these different angles, and they can only be attached on one end, and they can't sag. And so I thought, how am I going to attach a long spike on one end and not have it fall under gravity? And what I came up with eventually was balsa wood sticks, and I used three different thicknesses of sticks and three different lengths of sticks to kind of give it a natural variation in it. But even that alone isn't enough. I had to take the cray paper and kind of squish it over the end of a pencil and glue it on like that. So the cray paper is sticking up, and then I can just slide the stick into that, and the cray paper will help support the stick. Now the problem with that is each one of those cray papers that's bent around a pencil covers about one sixteenth of a square inch. And so on a porcupine pinata, porcupine puffer fish like this, there's five or six thousand of those. Making pinatas is cheap. I use balloons, newspaper, flour, and water. And that's all I use to build, basically build a, a little sculpture. And then I decorate it using cray paper. Almost always use cray paper. Occasionally I use other things as well. But the materials are very cheap. It's very time consuming. It's very messy. So, I mean, my daughter's always had a good laugh watching me work for weeks and weeks building something. They enjoy seeing the process, too. I always begin with some kind of picture, either something I find on the internet or something I draw myself. So I have an, an image of what I'm making. And they'll watch it, you know, from balloon phase all the way up until the final decorated phase, and then smash it. Become a DocuBlogger. Log on to DocuBloggers.org to share your opinions and story ideas, or get out your camera and create your own DocuBlog.